worldwide audience of somewhere in the region of two billion people tuned in on Saturday to watch Prince Harry marry Meghan Markle. And while many were eager to see what the bride was wearing, the most celebrated social media moment of the day was during Bishop Michael Curry's 13-minute uh, sermon when tweets, uh, tweets peaked at 40,000 per minute. Meghan Markle's veil uh, featured flora and fauna tributes to all 53 countries of the Commonwealth, including a Corfi from New Zealand. The veil's creators spent many hundreds of hours sewing the flower Hours, washing their hands every half an hour to keep it in perfect condition for the ceremony. Bridget Burke looks back on the big day and what's next for the newly named Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Speculation is rife. Prince Harry and his new wife Meghan Markle will visit New Zealand later this year. After an unconventional wedding and an evening reception that featured burgers, candy floss and fireworks with 200 close friends and family, the new Duke and Duchess of Sussex have put their honeymoon plans on hold to return to work this week. Tomorrow will mark their first official engagement as they attend a royal garden party to celebrate Prince Charles's 70th birthday. The Duchess is also expected to accompany the Queen to the Chelsea flower show and make a two-day trip to Dublin. The Duke has also committed to travelling to Sydney in October for the Invictus Games, an event he founded in 2014 for wounded, injured and sick servicemen and women. The couple is then expected to visit Tonga and Fiji, but are rumoured to have set seven days aside for a trip to New Zealand. The Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said today, although no formal announcement had been made, the couple would be welcome. The Royals absolutely um, have, a, have a, a, a standing invitation to come to New Zealand. The Duke and Duchess have both visited New Zealand before, Prince Harry most recently on a week-long official tour in 2015 and his wife the year before in a camper van. Chief Executive of the Tourism Industry Association Chris Roberts suggests October being shoulder season would be a perfect time to visit, but not in a camper van. Harry, of course, enjoyed Stewart Island uh, on a previous visit. Uh, Megan campervaned through places like the West Coast, uh, Kaikoura and Akaroa. Uh, but perhaps um, they might want to explore somewhere uh, a little uh, less well-known to them. So if, if they want to see somewhere new in New Zealand, I'd suggest uh, a trip up the East Coast from Wellington through Hawke's Bay, Gisborne, into the Bay of Plenty and, and a trip out to White Island, the, the active volcano, for a, a little bit of uh, spectacular action at the end of the week. In 2014, the Duchess praised New Zealand for its stunning lakes, welcoming wine country, glaciers, forest, farmland and beaches. The former Suits actress blogged her way around the country, visiting Queenstown, going to the movies in Wanaka and hiking up Franz Joseph Glacier. Joseph Shaw from Skydive Franz Joseph would love to see the newlyweds back in town. We're able to offer them the, the highest skydive in the Southern Hemisphere, a 19,000 foot jump. Um, and that flight path takes you out over the, the Southern Alps, over our highest mountains, Mount Cook, Mount Tasman, and um, it gives you that best possible view of the glacier of Franz Josef. Um, yeah, there's just no better way to see the place, especially uh, between the ocean and the, uh, the rainforest there. The Duchess also visited Kaikoura in 2014. Seeing dolphins was a highlight. She singled out Akaroa for its French seaside charm and cobblestone streets, ending her trip on the sleepy little beach island of Waiheke, where she says she rented a batch and visited the mud brick winery. Sharon Killen is the director of Waiheke Wine Tours. I would bring them over by helicopter because I think that would be quite exciting. Um, then um, I would take them to the zip line and they can do the uh, four fantastic zips there. Um, but then, of course, they'll be a bit hungry, so I'd take them to Tantalus Estate, who has the most amazing lunch on the island, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> then after that, um, wild on Waiheke for some clay pigeon shooting archery and, of course, a few little cheeky craft beers for Harry. I think he'd like that. Um, after that, then, of course, we would have to definitely go to three more gorgeous vineyards to do some tasting and get a good feel of the Waiheke atmosphere. Then at the very end, I would take them for dinner at the beautiful Cable Bay so that they get to see the sunset over Auckland City. Buckingham Palace said travel plans for the couple would be announced soon. The only barrier would be if two were to become three. With regard to the Duchess of Sussex, if she's pregnant in October, can she still skydive? Um, Yes, up to a, a certain stage, obviously. We'd have to get that run by our, our tandem mastered operators, though, just to confirm all those details. The Duchess has spent the past few months being schooled in etiquette and traditions by royal and diplomatic staff, including how she can expect to be greeted in preparation for her official duties. For Checkpoint, Bridget Burke.